Hey everyone, so today we're going to be tackling some AP style tangent and normal line questions. So these are the harder tangent or normal line questions that aren't just straight up asking you to write an equation of a tangent line or a normal line. These style of questions are styles of questions that you would see as multiple choice questions. So you're thinking that you have around two minutes per question. I'm obviously not going to speed through it and talk through it in under two minutes, but hopefully this will help to point you in the right direction if you encounter a question like this on your AP exam. Here we go. Number one asks for what value of k is the line y equals negative 2x plus k normal to y equals sine x in the first quadrant. So I have a line y equals negative 2x plus k and I need this line to be normal to the line y equals, or the curve rather, y equals sine x. Now, if this line is normal to sine x, I definitely want to pull out the slope of this line. The slope of that line is the slope of the normal line, which in this case is negative 2. If the slope of the normal line at whatever point x, y on the line and the curve I also know that the slope of the tangent line at the same point has to be a half, right? The slope of our tangent line and normal lines are opposite reciprocals. If the slope of the tangent line is a half, I can find the derivative of sine x, which is cosine x. And if I know that m tan, the slope of the tangent line is a half, I can set the derivative equal to a half to find the x value at which this tangent line and this normal line is intersecting the curve y equals sine x. When I solve for x here, I get x is pi over 3, which tells me that on the curve y equals sine x, which looks like this, there is a tangent line at x equals pi over 3 with a slope of a half. So the tangent line here has a slope of a half, and this x value is the x value I just found. That's pi over 3. So I have a lot of information right now about this tangent line, and then the normal line would be going through in this way. It would be perpendicular to that tangent line. I'm still trying to figure out this value k, but again, what I do know now about the tangent line, the normal line, and this point on y equals sine x is that the x value is pi over 3. I can find the y value of this coordinate by plugging the pi over 3 into my original. If I find y of pi over 3, that's sine of pi over 3, which is rad 3 over 2. This tells me the coordinates of this point here are pi over 3, comma, rad 3 over 2. This point lies on the tangent line, the curve sine x, and this normal line that they gave me to begin with. So at this point, what I can do is plug in pi over 3 for x, plug rad 3 over 2 in for y, and that will allow me to solve for k. So if I plug in the rad 3 over 2 for y, I have a negative 2. x is pi over 3 plus k. This is going to be rad 3 over 2 equals negative 2 pi over 3 plus k. I can add the 2 pi over 3 over and I end up with this crazy value for a k. I can't do anything to simplify that. This is it. There's the k value that I was looking for. Let's look at another example. Number two, a parabola y equals ax squared plus bx plus c contains the points 1, 5, and negative 2, 2. If the slope of the tangent line at 1, 5 is 10, find the value of a plus b. All right, so honestly, I have no idea what they need me to do at this point. When you read a question and have no idea, start sketching, especially when they give you points like this, because once you start a sketch, it will help kind of paint a picture of what's going on, and then you'll be able to figure out what they really gave you and what you need to find to get towards your final goal of in which case is A plus B. So I know I have a parabola that contains the points 1, 5, and negative 2, 2. I'm going to do a rough sketch with those two points. So 1, 5 is going to be about here negative 2, 2 would be about here. So these two points are getting connected and they are a piece of some parabola y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. They also told me that there is a tangent line at the point 1, 5 that has a slope of 10. If I sketch in a tangent line here, that's going to look something like this. I know m tan here is 10. And I know that the point that I'm tangent at is the point 
one five. I need to figure out these coefficients a and b. So at this point, I'm going to start working with the fact that negative 2, 2 is also a point on this parabola. Since that's the case, I can plug in the negative 2, 2 into the y equals ax squared plus bx plus c to start eliminating x and y and help me start solving for a, b, and c. So I know that y is 2, x is negative 2, so squared that would be a 4 b times negative 2 would be a minus 2b plus c. All right, it looks like I'm starting to set up some kind of a system possibly. Let's see what else I know and what else I can figure out. I can use this same idea to say that the point 1, 5 is also on y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So that would be 5 equals a plus b plus C. At this point, I'm at a little bit of a standstill, right? I have three unknowns here and three unknowns here. So I'm going to have to call upon some other information that they gave me to help move forward a little more. I can say at this point, maybe I'll find the derivative of this parabola and see what happens there. So if I find the derivative, I'm going to have 2ax plus b. I know that the slope of the tangent line at the point 1, 5 is 10. So I can let 2ax plus b equal 10. And I know that this is true, the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line is equal to 10 when x is equal to 1 specifically. So if I plug a 1 in for x, I get 2a plus b is equal to 10. What I can do now is call upon this almost system that I had set up. If I take these two equations and stack them, I get 2 equals 4a minus 2b plus c. And then the 5 equals a plus b plus c. If I multiply this equation by a negative 1, I keep this top equation. This equation becomes negative 5 negative a minus b minus c. And this is helpful because now my c's can cancel out. And I'm left with negative 3 equals 3a minus 3b. Now I've essentially set up a system with 2a plus b equals 10 and negative 3 equals 3a minus 3b. So what I'm going to do now is solve for b up here and then just substitute in down here so I'm entirely in terms of a and then I can solve. So over here, if I solve for b, I get 10 minus 2a. Now I'm going to take this equation, the negative 3 equals 3a minus 3b, plug in this b value, and now I can solve for a. So essentially what I found was since b was 10 minus 2a, I was able to let b equal 10 minus 2a. Now I can start solving. Negative 3 equals 3a minus 30 plus 6a. Add the 30 over, I get 27 equals 9a. So a is equal to 3. I still need to find b, which I know from down here is 10 minus 2a. 10 minus 6 gives me 4. So I'm finally ready. I have a and b. They asked me to find a plus b, 3 plus 4, there is the 7 that I was looking for, the values of a plus b. Let's look at another example. Number 3, at what point or points on the graph of y equals x cubed plus 16 will the tangent line contain the origin? So first I'm just going to sketch x cubed plus 16 so I have an idea of what's going on here. I know that x cubed plus 16 is my regular x cubed graph, just shifted up 16 units. So it's going to look something like this. I'm finding the points at which I have a tangent line that goes through the origin, which is the point 0, 0. So I'm looking specifically for a tangent line. I know my tangent lines fill in the form y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. This line specifically has to pass through the point 0, 0. So that would be an x1 and a y1 on this tangent line. So I know that y minus 0 equals m times x minus 0. I plugged that point into my tangent line. This simplifies kind of nicely to y equals mx. So now in order to complete figuring out this tangent line, my only unknown right now that needs to be in terms of something else is an m. I know that the derivative of x cubed plus 16 is going to be 3x squared. That 3x squared represents the slope of the tangent line, 
at any value of x. Since m is equal to 3x squared, I can plug that in here. So I have 3x squared times x. So the tangent line has the form y equals 3x cubed. I know that this tangent line intersects my original graph y equals x cubed. So if y equals x cubed and y equals 3x cubed must intersect, I can set those two y things equal to each other. I can let 3x cubed equal x cubed plus 16, and now I can solve for x. So if I subtract an x cubed over, divide by 2, I get x is positive 2. They asked for the point on the graph, so I still need to find y of 2, 2 cubed plus 16, which gives me 24. So the point on the graph y equals x cubed plus 16 that has a tangent line containing the point 0, 0 is at the point 2, 24. There's a line up here that has a tangent line that's going to pass through that origin, the point 0, 0. Let's take a look at one last example. Find the equation of the line or lines through the point 2, 7 that is tangent to y equals 2x squared plus 1. So similar to the last example, I know that whatever tangent line I have fills in the point slope form of a line y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I know specifically that this tangent line needs to pass through the point 2, 7. So I can plug a 7 in for y and I can plug a 2 in for x. I can even add the 7 over and distribute out that m if I'd like. I'm going to leave the m on the outside for now and I need to find m. Right? I know that this is the slope of the tangent line, so I need to find a derivative that's going to be 4x. The derivative of 2x squared plus 1 is 4x, which again represents the slope of the tangent line at any value of x. So if I sub that in here, I have 4x times x minus 2 plus 7. This line here, when I distribute in the 4x, this quadratic now, represents some tangent line that passes through the point 2, 7 and is tangent to the curve y equals 2x squared plus 1. I still need to find the equations of the actual lines. So at this point, again, I know that any tangent line is going to pass through the tangent line itself and is going to intersect the 2x squared plus 1. So I can set those two things equal to one another. 4x squared minus 8x plus 7 equals 2x squared plus 1. I'm going to start solving for x. If I subtract a 2x squared over, subtract a 1 over, I end up with something like this. I can factor out a 2. So I have 2x squared minus 4x plus 3. And then if I factor the x squared minus 4x plus 3, I get x minus 3 and x minus 1. This tells me that I have lines tangent to y equals 2x squared plus 1 passing through the point 2, 7 when x is equal to 3 and when x is equal to 1. This question asked me for the actual equation of the tangent lines. So at this point, I need to write the equations of two tangent lines, one tangent to 2x squared plus 1 at x equals 3 and one tangent to 2x squared plus 1 at x equals 1. If I start with x equals 3, I need to find y of 3. So that's 2 times 3 squared plus 1, which gives me 19. And I also need y prime of 3, which would be 4 times 3. That gives me 12. So one tangent line equation that I was looking for is y minus 19 equals 12 times x minus 3. That's one tangent line that's tangent to 2x squared plus 1 and passes through the point 2, 7. I have to do the same thing for x equals 1. So I need y of 1, that's 3. I need y prime of 1, that's 4. And now I can plug these values into the equation of my tangent line. So y minus 3 equals 4 times x minus 1. Here is my other line that is tangent to 2x squared plus 1 and also passes through the point 2, 7. That's it for tangent and normal line AP style questions. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.